I'd like to teach the world to bring experience to bear on challenges that we all face and problems we all share. I'd like to give the world a hug and shower it with love. We all can change the world we're in with lessons from above. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another hug, Hearts Uniting God's Spirit. I'm so happy that you're here and with us today. Today we have a very special guest. Her topic, her mission is so dear to my heart. I, I just, I cannot wait to share it with you. But first I want to say thank you so much for being here again. Thank you for listening, for being inspired, for giving us your comments, for interacting with us, for sharing this hug with your family and your friends and your you know, social media family as well. And you know, I just want to say thank you. And if you would, just take three breaths with me to really get centered here and now, and then I will tell you more about this beautiful woman here beside me. So go ahead and close your eyes. Just take a deep breath and feel your amazing body. And just call your power back into your body. Feel your toes and sit down deep into your hips, feeling your breath all the way down. And then take another deep breath, setting your intention on love and light and learning here, letting this hug embrace you in every level of your being. And then three, just take a nice deep breath and feel your connection with spirit, with God, with source, with Christ. However you relate to God and letting that just flow, knowing that we are here together in this embrace. So if you don't already know me, my name is Antika. I'm the owner and developer of the Divine in Nine courses and programs and teacher trainings at fithappychristians.com. And there I have a free gift for you called Embrace You, where you can learn about the Trinity within you for perfect health, wealth, and, and wisdom, that wisdom that God wrote for you on your heart. And I share wisdom, other people's wisdom, because we all have our gifts each week here on this hug. And today I have a dear friend, Kathleen Frank. She is a world-renowned international trainer and consultant as she has contributed more than 35 years of her experience in marketing and communications. She is a frequent speaker at top events, a published author, and she contributes articles for many industry-related magazines, industry-related magazines, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Aside from her career as a trainer, speaker, and consultant, Kathleen is currently focusing on writing more books while establishing a nonprofit organization called Restoration Life Foundation, where she desires to help girls and women who have been sexually abused, molested, raped, and trafficked, or trafficked. Her latest book, I'm Fat and Nobody Cares, addresses the many issues that people face who battle obesity and the reasons why the obesity epidemic is not solely limited to overeating. Through her own struggle and heartbreak, Kathleen attempts to uncover the roots of this rampant issue and bring light to the pain that she and many others have experienced through weight gain. All proceeds from this book will be given to Restoration Life Foundation. So... As you know, with my history, Kathleen, thank you so much for shining light on this subject, and I'm sure you're going to answer a ton of my, my personal questions, and it's just so great to have you here. I'm so excited to hear about you and your book. Thank you for having me. I, I, and I just I feel like a kindred spirit here, so I'm going to have fun this morning with you. Yes. <laughs> So why don't you just start with how God has really led your way from marketing and communications to a deeper form of communications and your own struggle and this book? Well, you know, I was abused when I was a little girl. I uh, first recognized it when I was 10 by my father. And, um, you know, my parents are, are, um, are career people and um, uh, I was actually not supposed to be a career person. I was supposed to be at home raising nine kids and, you know, the Walton family, that was my favorite show. And um, 
my parents were career people, so I stayed home and cleaned house, cooked and did the laundry and the ironing and all that. And I don't know, I just kind of fell into a career. Uh, but I've always had the desire for uh, writing. And so at, because I was abused, I told people about it, especially my mother. No one ever believed me. And that was, you know, in, in, 19, in the 1967, 1960 right. era. So it's not like it is today where people, people still don't believe, but more people do believe now than right. they can. And in and, and that, and that era, people just swept it under the carpet and didn't want to think about it. And uh, so I really had to uh, be a fighter and a go, you know, just somebody who just would defend myself and make sure that I wouldn't get hurt again. Um, but uh, I became this career person, but I always loved to write. And, and it's because it's an expression of feeling. You know, when you have everything bottled up inside and nobody's listening to you, I would just write and write and write and journal, journal. I have, I have so many journals, and and I don't really share them with anybody. It's just between me and and God, you know. And yeah. um, and then the Lord told me a long time ago. Gosh, it's been probably more than ten plus years ago to write this book. I'm fat, and nobody cares, and just tell the world about my story. And it took a long time to write the book. It it, it was painful for me to remember those memories and to, um, I don't want to get emotional thinking about it, but it's not easy to remember, you know, to keep those in the forefront of your mind when you want to just push it back and just forget about it and move on. Yeah. So, um, it took me 10 years to write the book and it's because I would shelve it for two or three years or four years and then I'd bring it back out and write a few more chapters, shelve it. And originally when I wrote the book, it was just full of venting. I vented the whole time during the book, and it just got a lot of stuff out. But it wasn't healthy. You know, venting is healthy, but it wouldn't be somebody something I would share with everybody because there was hatred and bitterness and unforgiveness in right. my life. And, um, and then so I started getting inner healing and going through what we call sozo, and it's, you know, it's an inner healing process. And you probably That's what I do for a living. And I, and, and I knew I, I knew I knew I loved you. <laughs> I just, I do. I got chills just talking about it. I yeah. just got set free. I was able to go back into my mother's womb and and feel the feelings that my mother had when, um, when I was conceived because I wasn't meant to be, uh, you know, at least for my parents. It, I was a surprise. It was not. I'm my brother's 16 months older than me, and so she. Wow have a baby that quickly. So I so I, I felt those feelings in my mother's womb. It's an amazing experience to be able to go back into your mother's womb. And um, I just got this inner healing and forgiveness and this love. And because, you know, during the years growing up, it's like, God, where were you when this happened to me? Why didn't you do anything about it? And I would blame God. And, you know, and you try to have a great relationship with the Lord, but it's very difficult when you have a very bad relationship with your earthly father. It's kind of hard to have a good relationship, a healthy relationship with your heavenly father. I always thought my heavenly father had a bat in his hand ready to hit me over the head anytime I did something wrong. So, you know, for years I was in this bondage and, and I put other people in bondage because of the unforgiveness. You know, because not only you put yourself in bondage and you can't move on. You know, earlier we were talking about you're that little girl, 11 years old. Well, I was that little girl for 10, 10 year old little girl for all my life, you know, and I yeah. just never grow out of that experience. And although I moved on into a career, a wonderful career, and I've traveled all over the world and I've written books for my career, I still had the pain mm -hmm. and I still had the memory and I still would cry thinking about it and 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 felt rejected and unloved and and so um as i was writing the book and i shelved it and wrote again and shelved it and then i started getting the inner healing i brought the book back and started reading it from introduction all the way down to where i didn't finish it yet but where i finished it till that point and i saw i don't feel that way anymore right. I feel that bitterness and that unforgiveness and that that charge um leaves I just was like, yeah. free. I was like, yeah. sense of freedom, and I, I, I was just very hard to explain to anybody, and um, I, so I rewrote the book, and I, you know, as I rewrote the book, there, 
I saw that the book was for so many people and I really wasn't writing the book to, to, to send it to anybody. I was actually doing it for myself. And, and then as I started writing the book, I started writing the book and, re and writing it to people. Okay. My memoir, the book is my life, my memoir, what happened. Um, it doesn't go into all the little details because I wanted to make it, you know, safe for teenagers to read. But um, it does go into the molestation. It goes into the bad choices I made with men in my life because I had a, a very skewed mind of what love was and you know, made bad choices in my life. And, and uh, you know, you can't go back and, and change the past. You can only take from what you have been through and then try to move forward into something more positive. And uh, so the, the book has a message of hope, has a message. It talks about all the ugly stuff, but then it also talks about the message of hope and forgiveness and love and how you can have a life, you know, really good life and a healthy life after this kind of trauma in your life and that you can channel it for good and be able to help other people. I think that, you know, the answer, where was God? You know, the, and God showed me he was there the whole time, but he gives us all free choice, free will, you know, and, um, you know, my dad had a disease, you know, it's not, I don't think my dad wanted to do what he did. It was just, he was, he had a disease, he was demon possessed, whatever you want to call it, right. it happened. Stuff happens to people, right. you know, bad things happen to good people. And that's just the way this world is. And so we can either channel it for bad, like a lot of girls, you know, uh, the sex trafficking is a, an, another thing. I mean, I lived in Japan for three years. I could have been sex trafficked. I worked as a hostess in a international nightclub in um there was no sex involved but it could have been you know um it, it it and i was in a strange country 21 years of age you know and i the the head of the yakuza which is the head of the mafia tried to get me to go to bed with him for fifty thousand dollars i chose not to do that but i could have you know i could have been one of those girls that said you know heck with it I've been abused, I've ruined my life, my life's ruined, let's just go with the flow. And I kept fighting and resisting and resisting and resisting. And um, and so that's why Restoration Life Foundation, through the book, um, the Lord showed me to put this foundation together to help, there's so many women out there and girls out there that need help. And they need direction and they need to know they're loved and that there is a, a love that's healthy, that a love doesn't hurt yeah. and, you know you were saying earlier about you're so so thankful for your girls that you broke the cycle and I th that didn't happen my girls also were you know molested and um, and I would lie awake at night is my husband my husband didn't do anything but I would lie awake and think is he still there you know because I'd get up and walk around if he wasn't to see where he was for for years I couldn't even sleep at night yeah I worried that my girls would be touched unhealthy and um I think that's common I mean I, I go through that I struggle with that I have very open conversations in in my house you yeah. know regular conversations in my house and um, I just have to get up and and go and check yeah all all of the time and I feel bad that I have to do that but I'm like you know what this is just this is part of of just what I have to do and um, going through what you need to go through. you know to go through what I need to go through so you hope that you make the right choices and unlike you I started getting help at 13 I was put into the, well, I was almost 14, but I was put into the system in Colorado at 13. And, and so, you know, it's been, I've been handling it, you know, for many years was the talk therapy and the group therapy and the, you know, my mother took me through rebirthing and, and different other techniques that to help um, lessen the charge around it. But most of those techniques had you revisit and revisit and revisit the abuse, which kind of replayed it. It, yeah. it was like re-re-abusing. It, it didn't really do anything. Like um, 
I don't even like to visit it with, with my clients. I acknowledge it. I'm, you know, empathetic and compassionate to the end, but then it's like, okay, now we're going to, yes, where is God in this situation? Okay. You see him standing there. Okay. Can you hand him all of this? Can you hand over the part that you understand, the part that you don't understand, the part that you're confused about? Can you hand over the pain? Can you hand over all of this? And, and with that is, is the freedom with the not visiting. However, I did have to walk through telling my story very openly for a whole year, last year, actually, just, um, you know, as candid and open as possible. And it was wild. At the end, I was like, what did I just do? <laughs> you know, like, uh, but I was just drawn to it. It's like, no, this is time to tell your story, completely be vulnerable with the entire world and coming from a place of, I understand, right? you know, I understand and there's hope. And that's what I'm really getting from your book too. It's that, right. it's that affirmation of, I understand, but I'm not going to stand in the life is whatever negative, or this is going to repeat. I'm going to stand for the change and the hope and put my faith in, in love. Channel it, channel mm -hmm. it in a positive direction. And that's the decision I had to make, but it, that decision didn't come until maybe a few years ago. Yeah. And, um, to be quite open, I'm 55. And so I, two, I, and the, and the, the, I didn't realize I was molested until I was 10. I woke up to it. Uh, in the middle of the night. So I'm sure, well, that wasn't the only time that he had violated me. I just didn't know. And um, and so for all these years, you know, I had to fend for myself because my mother wouldn't believe me. My brother wouldn't believe me. Um, my close girlfriends did. And, of course, they were afraid to come over, you know, yeah. that they would get violated. And, uh, you know, and even to this day, and to the – my family does not believe me to yeah. this day. And they heard about the book and they're appalled that I wrote such a thing and told the world about it. But, you know, I changed my author's name. I, I changed all the names in the book to protect people. But, you know, darn it, it's my story, you know, right, right to tell it. And if you would have helped me then, then maybe I wouldn't have had the need to write a book about it, you know. But yeah. the, the book is now helping you know, thousands of, 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 of people who need that help who also are not getting the help that they need. And they feel like they've got to take care of themselves and they have nobody to turn to because nobody understands. Right. And they've got somebody who, you know, there's, uh, my book's not the only book out there about stuff like this, but, um, you know, there's, there's a message in my book that maybe other books don't have. And I believe that as women read it, especially women, I mean, there are men that are molested out there, but it's, it's really designed, um, men can read the book because men have a weight problem too because of, the, of what happened to them. But my heart is more going out to the woman. Right. Um, it's going out to the little girl that has, you know, that grew up in, and never had a, a healthy childhood. And so, I mean, there are programs for men and there are programs for women, but my program is for restoring women. So the so. foundation, um, basically what that does is um, we provide healing for women and, and we um, also um, provide housing, um, food, education. A lot of these women don't have an education or didn't finish their education or they would like to continue on and go into college, but don't have the resources to right. do. Um, they don't even have a driver's license. Well, let's help them mm -hmm. license. Let's help them get a vehicle. Whatever we need to do to help these women be able to have a future, because God has a purpose for them. Like He has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me. Our DNA is not the same. He created us individually. Our fingerprints. There's there's no two. That even twins don't have the same fingerprints or DNA. So we're we have a unique. Crea God created us uniquely for a purpose. We need to find out what our purpose is. I just didn't really know my purpose fully until just a few years ago. Yeah. And I think it awakens in us when we're ready. You yeah. Know? 
when you ask, then it comes, but you have to ask and you have to be ready for that. And it takes a lot of confidence to be able to ask because when you ask, you have to surrender yes. completely. Okay. Um, so I've, is, is the organization work just in your area or how does it work? Is it well, nationwide? Is it just in your area? Is it? It's originally we were going to start in the Philippines and the reason for, for the Philippines, my husband's Filipino and he's from the Philippines and I've been there quite a number of times and the devastation there um, is, is, is very bad. Um, women are kicked into the streets. If you've been molested and you're a little girl even, you're just thrown to the garbage dumps. They don't want anything to do with you. And the, it, you know, so these women are and girls are walking around barefooted with tap, you know, ragged clothes and no food and just living in garbage dumps. Mm -hmm. And so it, originally I was going to start it there, but just recently I just went back to the Philippines twice last year. The second and the first trip was to look for property. The second trip was to, to, I was doing a speaking engagement and I was looking for property, but the Lord said, no, start it here first. And, and then once I started here, then we'll branch out to other countries. I was in India as well in September and, and saw, I started asking around because India, the primary religion there is Hindu and they do have uh, Muslim as well, but the primary is only 2% Christianity in, in India. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't think that India had a problem with some with molestation and incest and all of that. And I started asking around when I was there in September, and it's huge, yeah. huge. And there's like little to no resources there. So now it's like, okay, God has had me go to India and the Philippines, to China and to Africa, those main countries. I think he put me there so that I could open up these ministries there, these foundations. I don't really like to call them ministry. It's a foundation. Yeah. And, um, because I, and I don't want to call them shelters. It's a community. It's a right. community to be able to bring these women and give them hope. So we're going to give them healing, clothes, you know, a, low, a place to live. And we won't do it forever, but our goal is to get them independent, self-sufficient, so that and, and sh give them a trade. So that way we can um, take them and find them jobs. And so we'll oh. find them. So it'll be worldwide. Right Excellent. Now, it is going to, but I have connections already established in those countries that want it there. Excellent. But it's so fun. You know, it takes money to, to do right. this. And so. And the money, the money is coming. It's yeah. coming. So um, tell us a little bit about, um, The, the roadblocks. So you you have the foundation. You have your beautiful book. Would you hold it up, actually, so so people can see the cover? And that awesome. And um, would you just tell us a couple things? Like there's there's the blocks for um, you. Just I think you really hit it on the head. And I read it in your bio about the blocks not being overeating. Right the weight not being about overeating. And, and we have about 10 minutes left. I just wanted to take a moment and really talk about that because I know I myself have experienced the inability to lose weight in the natural ways. And, and that's my expertise, my, my profession. And so when it doesn't work for you the way that it works for all of your clients, you're like, what's happening? And I, so I know it has to do with, with my history and my beliefs and my blocks. Um, so we just talk a little bit about that and just educate everybody. Cause I don't know if many people realize that it's not their fault that they may not be losing right. the weight. When, um, after what happened to me, I started developing a weight problem and didn't re understand why and just pack on the weight. And so I was about 20, 30 pounds, always overweight. And, and then I'd lose weight and then I'd gain weight and lose weight and gain weight. And I found out later recently actually, that the reason why I was losing weight is when I wanted to be attracted to men. When there were times that I wanted to be attracted to men, somehow the weight just fell off. I didn't do anything. I didn't exercise. I didn't diet. When I dieted, I didn't lose weight. I actually gained weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, that's what happens yeah, to me. I started studying this and found out, it's in my book, in one of the chapters, it's called Our Digestive System is Your Second Brain. Mm. So, 
your digestive system is your second brain. Whatever is going on emotionally within you affects your digestive system. So you could cause yourself to gain weight or lose weight just through your emotions. And it's not a matter of eating a lot of calories. Like some people gain weight because they do eat too much. Right. Um, me, that was for the case. I was not someone that would eat 12 cookies. You know, I would not be someone that could eat. I never had an eating disorder or any kind of problem in that area. And I've been on so many weight loss programs. I actually got as large as 350 pounds. And I'm only two or three. So that's big. Yeah. A 5X to a 6X. Yeah. And, um, now, um, since I've gotten healed and delivered, 100 pounds came off like that overnight. It wow. was 100 pounds. I didn't diet. I didn't do anything. But for somehow, I was able to release whatever was holding me back and causing me to gain weight. And I believe that we use... We we who have been molested or violated use weight to shield ourselves, to protect ourselves. I want to be attractive. So to, and for my father to keep pinching me and touching me and doing things that I, I, I'd run. And, um, and so I gained this weight so I wouldn't be attractive. But whenever I wanted to be attractive to someone that I was dating or I liked, um, the weight would just come off psychologically. You know, and then it would come back on again. And then somebody was saying, well, how come you got your biggest weight while you're married to your husband? Now I'm, I'm in my third marriage. It's in my book. And i um, been married 21 years this month. Congratulations. Be... So I got married at the age of 17 with my first husband. Um, I've been married all my life, but this husband's been 21 years. He's been the longest. Um, he's, he's been the one that uh, passed the test of time, I guess is what you call it. But, um, and I've been, I'm very happy in my marriage. Why did I gain most of my weight during this marriage when I'm very happy? And it's because uh, I was afraid, and, and it's in my book, because I, I had affairs in my previous, you know, um, two marriages, and I was afraid that I would have an affair. I didn't trust myself because I was all in my mind about love and about getting attention and 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 when you've been violated like that you either go run one way and say I don't want anything to do with men or you say well I don't want to do anything with men right now but if the right one comes along I might yeah you know? oh my and so I was afraid I was afraid that I was going to have an affair and so that's why I gained from when we got married, I was a, I was still overweight. I was a size 16. But then I went to a size 5 to 6X during this happy marriage. And it's because I didn't want to have an affair. Mm. So it's that protection mechanism. But the protection looked a different way. Like you didn't want to be bad. You didn't want to repeat or act out on the pain that you had experienced before by sabotaging the relationships you gained weight. So yes. you wouldn't I feel attractive enough to get to make that mistake or to attract the, the other person. Um, yeah, that struck a chord with me. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so it just be something I can definitely take to God. So do you work with people? You said that your organization has counselors and um, support for people. And how would people get in touch with you to f get that support um, outside of your book? And how do people get your book? Okay. Um, they can go on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles and just get the book there. They can get it in Kindle if they want to or just order it. They can also order it from us. But I encourage people to order through Barnes and Nobles and Amazon unless they want an autographed copy um, because it just makes the book more popular out there. Yeah. But if they want an autographed copy, then they can contact us. We have a website, uh, KathleenFrankAuthor.com. Okay. Book. I have another website, which is RestorationLifeFoundation.org. Okay. And they can, there's a link to Kathleen Frank book there as well. Um, every month we have a blog on, or every month we have a blog on Restoration Life Foundation about um, molestation, incest, incest, sex trafficking. And we, I write an article so people get updated information about that. And there's this month, by the way, we have steps to healing. 
So if people want to get some steps to healing, where they also, we can do counseling over the phone if they're not in our local area. Mm -hmm. We can set up counseling sessions right over the phone. You don't really need to see that person. Um, we can do a video conference if they want to, or just right over the phone. So they can call our 800 number, which is 866-350-LIFE. So it's 866-350-LIFE, which is okay. 533. And, uh, or email us. We can even do email. Uh, whatever it is that they need, just let us know and we will do what we can to help them. So definitely ask and you shall receive from Kathy. <laughs> make, you, make it known to us what you're doing. Okay, excellent. So we're going to have all of those links, that phone number, everything right, right on the page at fithappychristians.com hugs. Um, so you'll be able to just take those links if you're listening from that page. If you're watching on YouTube, just jump on over there. The link is right next to you, and um, you'll have it. And, you know, Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you for what you do, for everything that you just shared. I know it just it takes so much courage to stand up and, and say, this is what happened. It takes even more courage to stand up and say, this is what happened, and it's okay. That's right. Thank you. So having me. I really enjoyed this uh, interview with you. I look forward to more in the future. Absolutely. I look so, I, I love your foundation and, and I hope I can really support you and, and be of support and uh, get involved in, in more ways than this. And if you'd like to, too, just please contact and, and get her book and, and learn more about how you can be relieved of of the weight within you. And I also have a gift for you, the Embrace You course at fithappychristians.com. You can jump over there and, and learn about how your body really is that protective mechanism for for you, for your life, and, and how you can utilize it as a tool rather than as a prison. And how you can utilize your vibrations, so your emotions, your beliefs, and call back your power to really own your vibe, what we call it over there in the Trinity. And have a relationship with God, with source. My language is Christ. So you can let go and allow spirit to truly transcend you above and beyond all of this physical matter down here. <laughs> and with that, jump on over to fithappychristians.com and get the Embrace You course, my gift to you. Contact Kathy. And until next time, enjoy this embrace. And thank you so much for sharing it with your friends and your family. We appreciate you. Bye-bye.